thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. I want to do a little um, video here with, uh, just showing a little respect to, for, um, for Coach Fossil of the uh, Giants who passed away recently. Um, he was a, uh, he was a, came up out of college, he was a quarterback, and he got drafted in the seventh round uh, by the Chicago Bears in a 1972 draft. Uh, in 1972, he spent, apparently spent some time on three different rosters, the Chicago Bears, San Diego Chargers, and the um, Houston Oilers. Uh, luckily, he didn't hang in there with the Oilers for very long. Uh, this, the Houston Oilers are the only team in NFL history... <laughs> who have had, in 1972 and 1973, they had back-to-back one-win seasons. So, I told you how bad. They were so bad in 1973. How bad were they? They were so bad in 1973, the Giants beat them 34-14, to and the Giants only had two wins that year. So, that just goes to show you how bad the Houston Oilers were back then. Um... Uh, after 72, 1973, he played in the uh, Canadian Football League with the Toronto Argonauts. And in 1974-75, he, he was in the WFL. Usually, t <laughs> teams are like the New York Giants, the New York Jets, the Dallas Cowboys. Well, the team he was on in the WFL was called the Hawaiians. They were out of Honolulu, but it was basically the Hawaiians, so... Take it for what it's worth. And and he's the, he, uh, if you ever get to ask the Trivial Pursuit question, who threw the final pass in WFL history? <laughs> it was, it was uh, Jim Fossil. He threw the final pass in WFL history in 1975. And a few days after that, the league folded. So the league was no more. Then he, uh, after that, that was the extent of his, his pro career. And then he, he bounced around quite a bit. Um, you know, coaching here, coaching there. Just before he, he, he uh, hooked up with the Giants, he was the uh, head coach of Utah from 85 to 89. Um, then the Giants got him in 91 and 92. After Bill Parcells left, we, uh, 19, 1990, we had Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick, and Tom Coughlin on, on our uh, coaches. After 90... They're all gone, and we had Ray Hanley. We saw Ray Hanley was our coach for two miserable seasons. Um, uh, Ray Hanley got Jim Fossil as the um, offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach from '91 to '92. Then he um, then he bounced. He was with uh, I think the Raiders. He was with Denver, and then he finally after um, the Giants. Needed a uh, head coach in 1997 after Dan Reeves was gone. Uh, Giants hired Jim Fossil. So he was with us from 91 and 92, and then he came back in 97. So from 97 to 2003, he was our head coach. Now, he was the coach of the year in 1997. He did a phenomenal job. Uh, the, the Giants were 10, 5, and 1, and we won the NFC East. Um, 1998, uh, we were 8 and 8. 1999, we were 7-9. Uh, 2000, when we went to the Super Bowl, we were 12-4. and four. We Once again, we won the NFC East. Um, I believe we were 7-2 and two in 2000. We lost a couple games in a row. One game we lost, the, the, we lost the second game that we in a row that we wound up losing, I think it was to the Detroit Lions. We lost 31-21. to 21. And uh, so we became 7-4. And you know, our playoffs, you know, we were seven and two. I mean, you're seven and two. I mean, you're looking good to get to the playoffs. Then we were seven and four. And I remember a reporter, I think, asked him something about, how you, something about how you feel about your playoff hopes or something or whatever like that. And uh, he uh, he did a Joe name and he said, We're going to the playoffs. We're making the playoffs. I'm just letting you know right now, putting all the chips in the table. We're making the play. He made a guarantee. The Giants, not only that, made the playoffs, but they won their last five games. They got behind their, their guy, their coach, and they won the final five games, and they wound up going 12-4. and four. They beat the Eagles in the uh, their first round of the playoffs, and in the NFC Championship game, 
they beat the Minnesota Vikings, the high-flying Minnesota Vikings, 41 to nothing. the NFC Championship game. They were up 34 to nothing at halftime. Man, I was, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful game. I'll get to, I'll get to the playoff games, you know, some, uh, you know, in, in a minute here. But uh, in 2001, we came back down to earth a little bit. We were 7-9. 2002, uh, we uh, went, went up second in the East behind the Eagles. We were 10-6. and six. We had a good season. Uh, once again, went to the playoffs. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> once again. 2003, we wound up 4-12. and 12. That was his last season. And, uh, you know, he got fired. We were 4-4 four and four at one point. Uh, we wound up losing the last eight games of the season. Um, but there were some injuries um, and just... We started off really good. I mean, it's a four and four. We were scoring some points. We we're getting some first first downs, getting some yards on. The last eight games, we could just like not get out of our own way. We were absolutely horrible. There was the first seven. We lost eight in a row. The first seven in a row, we lost. We didn't get. We didn't score more than thirteen points. Out of those seven games, four of them we scored seven points. One game we scored three points, another game we scored 10, another game we scored 13. There was three games in a row we scored seven points. Seven, seven, seven. The fourth time uh, we scored three. It was, it was, I, I remember that. I'm like, it was, I'm like, are we ever going to score double digits in points? It was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. So sadly, we had an eight game losing streak. Um, you know, four and 12, and they, they let him go. But, 2003 was not all that bad. Um, we uh, in, in the 2003 draft, okay, we got uh, William, William Joseph, tackle, first round. Second round, we got O.C., human your, maybe you heard of him. Uh, we also got David Deal, two-time Super Bowl champion. And we got David Helmet Catch Tyree. So in 2003, it wasn't all that bad. We, you know, we got some good draft selections. We set, kind of set ourselves up for the future. And you got to kind of look at it, too. It's like if we didn't lose those last eight games, um, we wouldn't have been picking where we did in the 2004 draft, and we may not have gotten Eli Manning. Um, if Jim Fossil didn't get fired, may not have had Tom Coughlin. You know, no Tom Coughlin, maybe no Eli Manning. Maybe we don't get the next two Super Bowl victories, so... Everything to, everything happens for a purpose, you know. And so, 2003, we were four and 12. It was very painful to watch, especially the last eight games of the season. But things wind up turning out for the best for the Giants. So, um, so it is what it is. But anyway, his playoff games. I mean, he had, you know, he had, there was there was a lot of excitement he brought to the Giants, especially in 2000 when you know he put he guaranteed we're making the playoffs and all. So there was a lot of good things. The, the NFC Championship game, we won 41 to nothing, which was the the biggest shutout in NFC Championship game history. Um, you know, it was it was a lot of a lot of excitement. But I mean, he had three of the brutalest, toughest gut-wrenching losses in playoff history. I mean, the first one was in 2000, um, I'm sorry, 1997, okay? We, uh, we won the division. We were 10-5-1. and one. We hosted the Vikings at home. And um, the Giants were winning. Uh, they were winning 19-3 at halftime. They were winning 19-10 at the end of the third quarter. And they were winning 22-13. to 13. They were up by nine points. They were up by two scores with two minutes to go in the game. And I remember, I remember that game. We were up 22-13. to 13. The Giants scored, you know, and it was, there was like five minutes to go in the game or so, somewhere around there. And I remember Randall Cunningham, the quarterback of the Vikings, like, you know, calling a play. It's like five minutes to go, four, four and a half minutes. The clock's ticking. And, he, and they're just like walking up to the line of scrimmage. You know, he's like looking around. I, I, I remember saying, I was like, doesn't he realize he's down by two scores? Where, where is the sense of urgency? Well, didn't seem to much matter, but I, I distinctly remember saying to myself, I mean, why, why aren't these guys hustling to the line? I mean, they're down by two scores. Well, there, there's, the Giants got, you know, they blew it themselves, but they also got screwed, too. Um, with a, about a minute to go in the game, Randall Cunningham throws a 30-yard touchdown pass to Jake Reed. Now, if you look, if there's back there, there's no instant replay. There was no flag. You couldn't call, have him review the player, nothing like that. But 
So it was 1997. But if you look at the replay and you stop it, the referee was behind Jake Reed. He wasn't on the line. Jake Reed caught a pass. Looked like he got both feet in, in bounds in the back of the end. But the, the referee was not on the line. He was not staring at the line when Jake Reed's feet came down. He was behind him. So he didn't have a good view. But if you look at the replay, okay, he gets his right foot in bounds, but it certainly looks like his left foot is on the line. Shouldn't have been a touchdown. But they gave, it, they gave him a touchdown. Now it's 22-20. Uh, to 20. Vikings kick an onside kick. The, the ball bounces off of Chris Calloway's like, chest. Ball goes loose. Vikings recover it. And then they wind up kicking uh, Eddie Murphy. Uh, Murray kicks winds up kicking a 24-yard field goal, and the Vikings win 23-20. They scored two times in like the last minute 10 of the game, and they beat. They scored 10 points in the last like minute 10, 20 of, of the game, and they, they beat the Giants. Unbelievable! I couldn't believe it. The next one was obviously when they had the um, they went to the Super Bowl and they lost to the um, to the Ravens 34-7. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, you know, but it, one thing that, that – one of the real rare occurrences in a football game, okay, I don't know how many other times this has ever happened, but three plays in a row were touchdowns, okay. It was only 10 nothing at halftime, and the Giants threw four interceptions. They fumbled the ball once. They had five turnovers. Of course, the Ravens didn't have any. You know, so the Giants were, you know, they had a hard time moving the ball. They had a hard time doing much of anything. So – Kerry Collins started pressing, you know, getting thrown balls in where he really shouldn't have. And um, the one pass got picked off by Dwayne Starks. He ran it back 49 yards for a touchdown. Well, on the on ensuing kickoff, okay, Ron Dixon ran it back 97 yards for a touchdown for the Giants. Now we're back in the game. Now it's 17-7. to 7. I mean, we're all fired up and all that. And everything's all excited, you know. And then on the next kickoff, okay, Jermaine Lewis runs it back 84 yards for a for a touchdown. So now it's 24 to 7. Now we have to score three times again, and you know, we couldn't even move the ball. So to try to think we were going to score three times wasn't happening. So, but three successive plays in a row with touchdowns, that doesn't happen very often. I don't even know how many other times it's ever happened in NFL history. I mean, probably it's happened, but, you know, very, very rare. But I mean, it's, it's like, it wasn't like, you know, you look at the score, it's like, man, that was that. No, I mean, the Ravens had 244 yards of total offense. The Giants had 152. 396 yards of total offense in the game is the lowest of all time. Okay? The Ravens scored 34 points with 244 yards of offense. The Ravens didn't move the ball. Brandon Stokely, I think, was the leading receiver in the game. He had three receptions for 52 yards. That's how much offense was going on in this game. It was brutal. So, so was the final score, and the Giants got their rear ends handed to them. The third game, the third playoff game, was possibly the worst of all. 2002, when we went to the uh, the playoffs, we were 10 and 6, finished second in the NFC, and um, we went out to San Francisco to play the 49ers. Now we were <laughs> we were we were winning 38 to 14, okay, with four minutes and 27 seconds left to go in the third quarter. We were up by 24 points with 4.27 to go in the third quarter, and we wound up losing 39-38. It was 35-14. to The Giants drove down. They were on like, the five-yard line of San Francisco. On second down, uh, Kerry Collins drops. He was looking, 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 and he throws the ball in the corner end zone. It was a little high, but um, Jeremy Shockey had the ball went right through his hands, right through his hands. Um, if he caught that, that might have been the dagger. That might have made it 42-14. to 14. Might have made it where the 49ers couldn't have come back. But the following play on third down, same thing. Kerry Collins short, same spot for Jeremy Shockey. He jumps up. This time he catches the ball, comes down. His one foot's in bounds, second foot's out of bounds. No touchdown. They call, they, uh, you know, they it's incomplete. They, they, then they go for a field goal and put about 38-14. 49 come back with three touchdowns, two two-point conversions, a field goal, and they missed one another two-point conversion. So they're up 39-38. All right? And the, the only other good thing that happened to the Giants is when they had to, they got the ball back, and they drove down the field, and it was pretty much the, uh, uh, 
there was like 10 seconds to go in the game. The Giants on third down decided to kick a field goal. Well, they got Trey Junkin. He played in 19 years in the NFL. He was pretty much a long snapper. He, 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 he had two bad snaps that game. The, this one was the second one. There was four bad things that happened on this play to the New York Giants. Okay. Um, the first one was, the, was a bad snap. Second one was Matt Allen, okay, who got the ball, could have stood up and spiked the ball because it was third down. They would have gotten a fourth down, and they could have tried it again. They could have gotten made a good snap, maybe they kicked the field goal and they win the game. Matt Allen didn't do that. So Matt Allen gets the ball and starts, you know, calls a signal, and, you know, and, and wh whoever is supposed to be a, a designated receiver runs down the field, and he's going to try to throw, throw a pass to him. Well, Rich Seibert was one of the designated receivers. He's down the field, okay? He throws the ball, Matt Allen throws the ball in the air. Rich Seibert, it, it, ball's going to him, and you can see one of the 49ers guys pulls him down by his jersey, and Seibert's laying on the ground like this. Ref, ref calls a flag, and uh, actually they call an illegal man downfield on the Giants. Tam Hopkins, number 65, is illegally downfield. Okay. But they should have called pass interference because Rich Seibert was an was a legal receiver and he was a, he was taken down illegally. They didn't call that one, so they, they called the the one on Tam Hopkins, but they should have. And then the one against Seibert, they didn't call, so they screwed the Giants over. And then the next day, the NFL calls the Giants up and say, "Yeah, sorry, we 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 um we screwed the call up." Yeah, and yeah, so that thanks. Um, so the Giants got screwed on that one. They should have they had, had an opportunity, should have been offsetting penalties, and the Giants should have had another opportunity to kick the winning field goal. They never got that opportunity to. But they're up 38-14 to 14 with 4 minutes and 27 seconds left to go in, in the third quarter, and they wound up losing 39-38. That was a gut-wrenching, gut-wrenching. But anyway, the next week, the 49ers went to play the eventual Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kicked the living crap out of the 49ers, 31 to 6. And I loved every second of it. So um, that was 2002, 2003. You know, had the bad season. Fossil was f fired after that. We got Coughlin and Eli. And you know how that went. But after that. Um, 2004 to 2006, Jim Fossil was with, was with the Ravens. He was an offensive consultant for one year. He was to try to, uh, they, they drafted Kyle Bowler, and they were trying to, you know, because Fossil was very good with quarterbacks and all. And uh, he, so he tried to, you know, help Kyle Bowler become a quarterback, and he was not at all. He was not good at all. Um, he was, uh, Jim Fossil was the offensive coordinator for the, uh, for the Ravens from 2005 to 2006, they I think they they were the last in the league in offense, and, and the Ravens wound up leaving, letting them go. Um, then that was the last of his pro coaching career. He he wound up being a broadcaster from 2008, 2007, and 2008. He was a broadcaster for two years, and then he was the head coach of the Las Vegas Locomotives in the UFL for four years: 2009, 10, 11, and 12, and Two times, 2009 and 2010, they were the UFL champions. So it was just funny because he took the Giants to the Super Bowl, took the Giants to two play, uh, two additional playoffs and all, and he never got a chance to coach again in the uh, in the NFL. I always thought that was a bit odd. He wasn't the greatest coach in the world, but you take a team to a Super Bowl, I thought somebody else would give you a chance, but it is what it is. So after 2012, that was the end of his his playing career, his coaching career, and sadly on June 7th of this year, 2021, he had some chest pains and a friend of his took him to a, a local hospital and sadly while he was under sedation, he had another heart attack and he passed away at the age of 71. Well, as always people, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!